uh, I just recently interviewed uh, Michael Jai White, and uh, you know he talked about how when he got into Hollywood, and you know being a martial artist, you know a black martial artist as well, the one person that he looked at was you. Like The Last Dragon, where you have Time Act, this great looking guy, at the height of these martial arts action movies, the height of Shapiro Glickenhaus and, and Canon films and all this type of stuff. You have this tremendously successful movie with a, a, a black character who can kick ass, good looking, and is a household name and they never offer him another movie. Yeah, he was never in anything else after that. I took that to heart and I said, they are not checking on me. Mm. I happen to know, I can name 20 people that had, 20 white guys who had, uh, had contracts with all of these different companies, the Canons and all that type of stuff. And uh, all they had to do was be able to somewhat kick. And they were given contracts, major contracts, and not one to Time Act. And I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. If I had the money, I would bank on him. But they were not. And personally, even though, I mean, I can name, oh, there's so many movies where I would uh, audition as the best friend to the white guy. And it's an action movie, <laughs> right? And there'd be times where, I can't tell you how many times where someone would say, we need a white you. <laughs> Somebody who can act and do martial arts. Oh, that's kind of a, a white version of, <laughs> I'm, I don't know, I don't, even, I don't even see color, man. I, I, I get the whole thing about color, but it, to me, it's just a ignorant conversation, you know? I mean, I understand it. But, uh, you know, I don't choose people in my life based on color. I choose people who they are, you know. Uh, and when people tell him, you know, white version of him, well, who are, I am who I am, you know. It's not just my color. I'm who I am first. Well, you know, um, Bruce Lee is kind of a central, you know, character in The Last Dragon. You know, I mean... They were calling you Bruce Leroy in the movie, and they were playing parts of Enter the Dragon, you know, throughout the movie and so forth. Um, I remember Michael Jai White, he, he did an interview a while back, which, which we discussed in our interview as well, where he said that he could have beaten Bruce Lee. Oh, he should have never said that, but he, he's, he apologized for that. He should have never said that. If I had said that amongst fighters... They completely understand. There's not one real, not one real fighter that would dispute what I said. Right. Because they know. 220 pounder versus a 130 pounder. Yeah. Uh, at the time I said I was 235, but it, it's like. <laughs> 100 plus pounds. Exactly. And then somebody who is not a fighter. So even if, if it's amongst elite fighters, Floyd Mayweather is, and I'll, I'll defend this with anybody is the most advanced fighter who ever lived. Mm. The, is, it should be no disputing that. No disputing that. But there's no freaking way in the world he's going to beat Mike Tyson. He could run across the street, <laughs> and dive off a table, and punch Mike Tyson with all he has, and it's not going not, not to affect him. Yeah. It's, just, it's, it's just physics. I don't care about weight, you know? You, I, I seen cats that are different weight classes like that knock out big guys, you know? So th that has nothing to do with it. Weight has nothing to do with it. You know, you know, if you get a, trust me, there's some guys, five, six, 140 pounds, kick you in your nuts. Good night. <laughs> so you don't think you could have beaten Bruce Lee? Uh, I don't really think about that. He was my hero. That's like, why would I think about fighting, you know? You know, yeah. It would be yeah, interesting. It would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I mean, people always bring up, like, you know, what would have happened if Mike Tyson at his prime fought Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali in his prime? And, you know, I mean, there's well, Mike always Mike Tyson the... said that Muhammad Ali would whoop him. But, you know, I mean, uh, but it is a good, uh, yeah, we all fantasize about that if you're in the fight game, you know. Uh, but, you know, you don't really know what's going to happen 
until it happened, you know? You know, fighting is strange like that, you know? You should show up one night and not feel yourself, and the other guy could feel like a ferocious beast, and everything that's happening in the fight is not going your way, you know? It could be the other way around. The guy could be a ferocious beast, and you could feel not yourself, and he could be giving you a beat down, and then all of a sudden you come back. That's why people enjoy the fight game, you know, because it's unpredictable, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, you do the movie, and then you have the lockout period. But eventually you start getting back into acting and so forth. I guess you were on a different world and various other TV shows and so forth. Like, how was the Hollywood game for you at that point, you know, after The Last Dragon? Yeah, I was just trying to navigate and pay bills, you know. Um, I was, uh, you know, I'm a martial artist, so I was committed to the craft uh, and, and studying acting and doing theater. So I got invested in the craft of acting. I studied at the Beverly Hills Playhouse with uh, uh, Milton Casellas, Jeffrey Tambor, Richard Lawson. I actually just finished a, a program with Richard again. And um, that's where my commitment was to the craft of acting because I couldn't really understand uh, the whole business side of it at the time. I was very young and there were meetings that were set up and there were promises made and dropped every other day. So uh, there was no no uh, foundation there for me. So what I did was I said, okay, let me just keep continue to enjoy the craft of acting and uh, and uh, you know just pay my bills and 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 just find my way. So that's what I ended up doing and. Uh, I eventually found found myself in a certain uh, in a kind of a, in a spiritual way, not religious, but in a spiritual way. And then uh, I started writing. I wrote an autobiography. I did the audio book. I I wrote some screenplays. And currently, with my agent, developing a uh, um, a graphic novel. Uh, so, kind of, this is my time. You know, mm. everything's come full circle. Well, I guess you worked as a a choreographer. Uh, with a bunch of celebrities uh, in terms of martial arts choreography. I guess Madonna was one of them. Right, right, right. Uh, I choreographed the Sky Fits Heaven number in her drama world tour. That was really um, exciting. Um, yeah, you know, you're working with Madonna, and uh, she's a very uh, talented icon, you know, so it, people oh, yeah, liked I mean, it. I mean, Madonna, for those that don't remember, they're too young to remember, like she was like the Rihanna of her day. <laughs> I mean, at her height. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she had, uh, she really made her mark with her, her style and uh, people like Jelly Bean Benitez was at the beginning with her that mm -hmm. kind of put in a certain sound and and then she was a hard worker, very intelligent and very ballsy. She she didn't care, you know, and she knew who to hook up with, who not hook up and and she just, uh, you know, she she made her, 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 her way. You know, a lot of, lot of, lot of attention. Well, you also worked with uh, Janet Jackson, right? We did uh, the "Let's Wait a While" video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I mean, you really got to work. I mean, even though you weren't starring in films anymore, you were working with some pretty exceptional people. Yeah, I mean, they were reaching out, and uh, you know, different people reach out to me, and and that's what ended up happening. Yeah, we ended up doing work together. I mean, it was okay. exciting when it when it did happen, but I didn't uh, still didn't have the the business mind. I was still struggling through uh, not quite understanding the business, uh, and I just look back at it as it was not the time. To me, timing is everything in, you know, in life. You know uh, that there's a you know if you put something out there in front of you in the in the future, uh, and it's Something like, let's say, I want to make these amazing uh, uh, films with uh, really flushed out characters and something that really I could stick my teeth into. Well, maybe at the time I need to go through some things in order to get there uh, so things wouldn't, won't happen right now, you know? So you, you, can, you don't have to give up on that, that vision. You just keep uh, carving out uh, that vision and keep making yourself better and that's kind of what ended up happening for me i feel like again like i feel like this is the time for me 